Okay, welcome to the beautiful Dominique Fletcher. Thank you so much for being on the Worthy Woman podcast. I'm so excited to meet you in person. This is um, really exciting for me. Thank you for having me, darling. You are so welcome. I was just saying I was so excited for this chat because these chats like fill my soul, expand my heart. I just feel my oxytocin just rising. It's like we're just catching up for coffee or tea. I just love it so much. Um, I actually had to quickly pause our conversation because Dominique was already sharing so much magic. I was like, no, let's wait. <laughs> um, so here we are. We're ready to dive in. Um, I'll let Dominique tell you about her and what she does. We'll start with that. Um, but Dominique is a woman's nurturing coach. And I just, just that word nurturing coach, I think we all need that, ladies and men, but um, especially women. And so I'd love you to just talk a bit more about um, what, what it is you do, what a woman's nurturing coach means, why we need nurturing. I know we need it, um, <laughs> but we were just literally talking um, how women really struggle with this. Mm. And I was no different. And lots of my listeners, lots of my clients are the same. So I'd love you to dive back into that. Okay, darling. Well, thank you for the intro. So, yes, I'm a women's nurturing coach. And I help women discover that inner balance within mm. themselves and connect back to their heart that, you know, as a mom of two little people, as a business owner, we can never find that external balance. And something I feel like, women try to look for and it's not attainable where the balance comes from is within yes and it's connecting back to your heart instead yeah. of living in your mind and it's the way in which we interact with our externals that makes all the difference are we attaching are we in this cycle of trying to take care of ourselves mm. and then falling away because it's just too much it's adding to our to-do list yes but this is where we're weaving in that connection of how am I talking to myself how am I taking care of myself how am I holding myself on those days that are shit mm. yeah because let's be real we all have them like mm -hmm. and social media has not helped us in this at all like we have need to constantly remind ourselves and each other that that is just a snippet of their life. That mm. is not their whole life and that is not their every day. So if my every day doesn't look like that, because mine definitely does not look like that, mm. nobody's does. And that's the truth. But this mind, I love how you spoke to that because I really believe the same. It's like our mind will create this different reality. Yeah. Total different experience. And it is like checking in back into your heart that knows the truth. And something that I always say to my women um, during check-ins, during in my membership is, how's your heart feeling today? Mm, How I is your that. heart space feeling? And what do you need this week or today to mm. feel held and nurtured? Mm. And this comes up, the, the more of a challenging day we have, the more we ask mm. ourselves this question, that it comes down to those moment by moments that, I'll use an example of a client this morning that, you know, a three-year-old just threw a huge smoothie all over the sofa and she just, she did, she roared. Mm. And then mm. she came on and she shamed herself. And I was like, let's hold yourself in it, that yes. you are a human being. And at times we're going to have those times that we yell at our kids. Yes. And you know what? That is okay. Yes. And, you know, I have experienced this, this, this shame, constantly having to pull that shame out and, and like looking at the shame. That's what I have to do. Like pull it out and go, I see you, shame. Mm -hmm. Trying to make me small again, trying to make me wrong, trying to make me the, a bad person. You know, mm -hmm. it's just crazy. And as a mum, I know this comes up a lot, like, I always say nothing triggers you like your own children. No. And you know, nothing. the Dalai Lama said, he said, I would not have the patience to have a child. And he oh. said, it is the biggest spiritual. This is what I said to her as well. This is the biggest spiritual journey you will ever go on because yes. they can help everything that's inside of you. Yes. And they put it right in front of your face and mm -hmm. you live with them. You have to, you can't 
say goodbye. You can't put them away in a box or you have to meet them in every moment and meet them every day. And I love that. I didn't know that the Dalai Lama had said that. I feel even better. Everyone else, breathe that in. If the Dalai Lama cannot even do this and we are doing this. That we have got that inner da- Dalai Lama yeah. in us. And <laughs> just take a moment to really feel that, like let that empower and, us. <laughs> and, and what is so empowering is about the tools and embodiment that I can give clients content to work on, but it's actually the embodiment and the tools yes. that we're able to hold ourselves in those moments mm. and actually pass through the emotions quicker and feel them. Yes. Whereas when we're so attached to the externals, we are mm. in this turmoil all the time. Yes, yes. And it can be so hard to hold ourselves in that and pass through it because we're attaching to everything and we're mm. feeling very, very vulnerable. Yes. Oh, there's so much in that. And honestly, I've been experienced this ex- experiencing this exact same thing with my children lately. I've got a three-year-old and a five-year-old. And I swear where they're both going through their own journeys, like really peak points in their journeys at the moment. And me and my husband are finding we are having to check in with ourselves more of the time and check in and go, what do I need? I need to give myself that thing. Because for me, I know when I do blow up, it's always because I haven't filled up. You know, I'm already empty, I'm already stretched, and I haven't given myself what I need to be able to hold me and then hold them in it. Um, And I know in a relationship sense, we have to do the same for each other. We're like, Mm. what do you need? Do you need something? And and let that be okay, because we we do need that. We need to check in. And what what I'm finding, Aston, is it's not so much the knowing that we need to do that, because, you know, society has Mm. has raised consciousness in that. It's more the the embodiment how yes and it is really really challenging for us yes we have this desire in us to really be held and seen and to say okay to take a break but what happens is this subconscious mind which has been created from zero to seven years old and carried through to adulthood that 95 percent of our mind is ruling the show not our conscious mind that says yes I need to take a break and we are anchored in the past Mm. because of that so we want to make this change but there's this uneasiness about it that it feels unsafe for our nervous system and you know why I'm so passionate about this is I I'm going through healing from burnout now Mm. I'll be really honest last night um, my body had a flare up and I was weeping in bed. I, mm. I I struggled to move. I couldn't tuck my little one in bed. And, you know, this journey that I've been on that I always thought that to take space up in this world that I had to people please and I had to achieve and create and do. And that is what led me to this point in my life but it's also been this biggest gift Mm, of shift and change and you know of course I I was nurturing and helping clients because I used to be a personal trainer but when it came to me well no Mm. I wasn't holding that space yes because of these limiting beliefs so if you're listening to this and your heart goes god I want to look after myself but I can't love and compassion for yourself that sometimes it's not as easy as that yes and I love how you mentioned that because I was the same three years ago all of my inner child um kind of things around like perfectionism people pleasing you know it's always coming up but that really came to a head for me three years ago and I had the same um, experience of feeling like I had to do to be valuable I had to be doing everything for my children. It was it was really when I went from one to two children that mm. I could no longer kind of, um, you know, cover the cracks with Band-Aids, you know, and I say this to women all the time. Um, you know, one, I could kind of just, you know, things would come up, but I could hide them. Two children was a real gift for me because it, it stretched me. Um, And it meant these cracks, they were going to be seen, they were going to be um, shown. And 
yes, it was painful. Like you said, yes, it is hard, but they, they, I needed to crack open for the light to come in and for me to see that it's not my responsibility to do and be everything for everybody. You know, it's that I put that responsibility on me. And like you said, it was, it was from childhood. It was a coping mechanism. Yeah. that I had developed, you know, to keep everyone happy all the time. And then I would be loved or then I would um, be enough, you know, and it, it really, it, it can be hard facing these parts of yourself. But on the other side, it is so freeing. And like you, I've made so many shifts to be mm-hmm. able to realise I don't have to be a good girl. I don't have to be a people pleaser. Not everybody has to like me um, and that it is okay. It is perfectly okay. It is imperfectly okay. And this human experience that we're in, that I promise you through the messages and the DMs and the voice notes between clients, like, you know, no one has their shit together. Oh, no. The reason I do share so much of my journey is to to really normalise that. But also these times in the darkness, in the shadows, in the intensities, we find it hard to feel them but Mm. they are huge gifts or guidance and sometimes we need to be in that contrast to really ignite that desire in your heart to say I want to feel different yes and sometimes we do need to sit in that shit a little bit and that's okay before that lotus can grow in that mud and yes so much juiciness in those times and um where was I going that this is the brain fog <laughs> that um you're never alone in, in no. it you're no. never but in. isn't it crazy how because I have these same conversations and this like this this thing of shame comes up that like I shouldn't like I shouldn't blow up at my kids or I shouldn't I, I shouldn't find you know being a mum hard or I you know, I shouldn't find looking after myself hard or, and I know that's a big one, a lot of, a lot of women, and I was the same initially, to start looking after yourself, like you said, we know, Mm. we know that we need to do it, but then there's this gap between knowing it and actually embodying it and being it and letting go of the guilt, because I know that was a step for me, there was guilt in the beginning when I started to look after myself yeah and it it does feel uncomfortable at first yes because your nervous system is so unsafe for your nervous system Mm. now something I'll I'll I will share which has been so useful for me and my clients is okay there's this version of you that is fearful of putting yourself first is fearful of taking care of yourself Mm. it's got these stories going on and on about how you should this and should that whose stories they are societies someone said something to you yep they become so real so bring that version I think we've discussed this before bring this version of you up because like we we can be so focused on that future version of ourselves bring her up talk to her have a cup of tea with her reassure her connect with her because Mm. what we can do is push that away push the shame away push the guilt away push 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 and all we're doing is creating resistance yes bring her up yes let her hang out yeah well welcome it don't resist it welcome it you know think about you know a young young child having emotions or do we push them away I know sometimes we may feel like it but do we push them away or you know, do we let them be seen, heard? What do they want to be seen yeah. heard and acknowledge? Yeah. So why is it okay that we push that version of ourselves away? Yes, I love you that. And held. that in itself is so healing. I know for me, um, I know when you shared that, I loved it. I was like, that is so powerful. And for me, I didn't put two, to, two and two together, but I always, when I'm needing to, process that old version of myself um I didn't know it was my old version of myself but now I do after connecting with you but I would always hold my nervous system like I was holding my daughter or my son and like witnessing myself in it and just holding myself in it and saying it's okay it's okay like yes the fear's there yes the guilt's there it's okay 
Um, and I loved, I know you touched on it just before, that I believe as well that you have to feel it. You have to feel it. It is uncomfortable. But if you just feel it for that moment and you sit in the shit, like you said, it does pass. And it definitely passes. And having those expectations of how long it should pass and it yes. should pass this time and you shouldn't feel it, should, shouldn't, shouldn't. It's like, you know what? It's sticking around and it's being with you for a little bit. Again, if we start putting expectations or pressure on, what's mm. going to happen? It's going to glue to us instead yes. of feeling heard and seen and being in our feminine energy of really embracing feelings and we're flowy and we're fluid and we're moving all the time and mm. you know it's holding yourself in those moments okay I'm feeling emotional I'm feeling whatever emotion you're having okay what do I need in this so not pushing away but how how what do I need do I need to speak up to my partner and say look I'm feeling this is what I used to do with my partner is I'm feeling really really anxious so you acting in that way I'm just going to withdraw because what I need is this yes yeah you know and speaking on that and yes you know saying if you're having an intense week or you're feeling low in energy speaking to other people then you have to say I'm just going to do the minimum at the moment I'm really feeling it yes and, uh, I'm putting those expectations out there because and then you can have that time to go, yeah, go inwards. Yes. Without that guilt, without. Yes, that I love that. Yeah, full permission to, to speak where you're at, to meet yourself where you're at, and then communicate that. And, mm. you know, and that's how we get to own it, don't we? We get to say, look, this, this is our life. We do get to put up some loving boundaries, and they are definitely needed, definitely needed. Um, in relationships, but in life in general as well. Like we're all so bombarded these days with messages and like and messages in like so many different ways. There's like three different pl platforms that will message you and then your phone and then you, the phone call. And you know, it's just crazy. Like our nervous systems were never designed for that amount of stimulation continuously. No. So, you know, nobody can just like, just like just go into that and not have some sort of response from their body you know our bodies are not our minds our bodies are not designed for that mm -hmm. constant um you know basically interruption you know mm -hmm. to to our lives and and where what we're doing and so i i fully agree that you you must have those loving conversations i know i do with adam all the time my husband like I, I'm very aware of how I'm feeling and I'll take ownership of it. I'll take full responsibility. I'm feeling this. Mm -hmm. I'm needing this. I'm not able to do that. Yeah. And something I find that you can have pushback from that. So yes, that, you know, my blessing, my husband, the trauma that he has experienced, he is living with it at his side. That's part of him. Yeah. It, not my role to fix it for him but he's no. with it there but he does not know how to hold that space for me yes. and I, I have to be more vocal with him to say I don't want you to fix anything yeah this is how I'm feeling this is what I need because our ego likes to come in and say well they should know like they should oh, know yes they, they don't care or they should know how to hold me and why don't oh. they do they not care da, 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 da. and it's like you know if I speak up because he's he isn't capable yes he isn't capable of that and I you know with love and compassion for him that is that is the reality and yes. you know the things that have shifted in our relationship humongous because he is adrenaline he's in fight or fight all the time yeah it doesn't stop the only thing that has shifted is with me and my communication and the way I work on my frequency and what I interact with and mm. what I don't interact with and knowing that that's his energy not mine yes. you know he is the husband that you know you you have your first baby who is in neonatal and then you have to move house, you buy a house and he jumps straight into renovations or you have your second baby that you have to move out the house because we're renovating. He is 
that partner and that is him and I didn't speak up at those times I was with the postnatal depression anxiety I didn't speak up and that was where we were in our relationship so the Mm. only thing that's changed is because I'm able to vocalize my needs yeah and you know that's really common I I that was very much my experience a lot of the women I work with it's always the women that come first Mm -hmm. we work with couples but it's always the woman that comes first and what's so beautiful is you can activate change and you can empower yourself in the relationship you don't need to wait Mm -hmm. you know and we shouldn't wait I'm like we shouldn't wait like you said I love we, we stay in our own energies we're responsible for our own our own energy responsible for our own healing Um, And I know for years, I did the same. I thought I was responsible for my partner's healing. I, you know, not, I didn't think that he needed fixing, but obviously that's what I was trying to do. That was my ego coming out. It wasn't until I just continued to separate our energies and come back to myself and focus on how I wanted to feel. And like you said, learning how to communicate what I wanted and feeling safe in that. And like I say to women all the time, he didn't always meet me in that mm. because he couldn't. Like you said, they they are very different to us. Mm. And um, I heard this recently and I loved it. You know, we're not just married to a person. We're married to their nervous system. We're married to their trauma. We're married to their past. We're married to, you know, all of that stuff, mm. you know, and usually it takes a few years for that to fully rear. But and add in like a an initiation like a birth and (laughs) or you know or like moving house or something it's like wow you know it's gonna hit the fan (laughs) yeah and it was the same for us like both times um and I loved how we were talking about expectation you know I never thought I had expectations around birth and what it would be like being married and having children and but then when things don't go the way you thought they would go, you realise I did have some expectations around how I thought that would go. Um, and just learning how to communicate, okay, well, like the contrast, that was not what I needed. Yeah. I now know what I need because I went through that. And now I'm going to use my voice and I'm going to communicate it. And, um, yeah, I know for me, <laughs> my husband is sounds very similar and I have to be very clear. You know, I have to speak very clearly about what my needs are. If I just, you know, just start speaking, 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 sometimes he'll try and fix it. And I have to gently but lovingly say, I just need you to listen. Yeah. And he's like, oh, that that type of conversation. I'm like, oh, yeah. right. okay, yeah. 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 Like, that one. Know, and that takes them time to does. mount that. And, you know, when I come back full circle, when I mean nurture yourself it's all of this deeper like oh, you know yeah. all, all of this deeper stuff and how we interact with other people and their energies mm. certain people you know are in our life for different reasons and yes. certain locations affect our energy because I'm, I'm all about working with different energies yes and learning that what makes you feel feel good mm. what makes you feel on edge feeling 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 yeah, because true, then you can yeah. really develop that relationship with yourself that what feels right for one person isn't mm. what feels right for you and it's the same with taking care of ourselves when we looked look at taking action that someone going for a gentle walk that's just what feels so good and loving and nurturing whereas someone wants to do a hardcore I used to be that person until adrenal fatigue used to, you know, that hardcore workout that just pumps the body and it feels so yummy to them Mm. and it's follow your yumminess. Yeah. Follow your bliss. I love that. And, you know, I have found the more I give myself permission to do that, Mm. the more I give more women in my life permission to do that. The ripple. Yeah. The ripple is so powerful. And also my husband, because you know, I really think men need nurturing too. I know my husband for years, he didn't even know what he needed. Mm. You know, that good boy in him and and so many women have this as well, that good girl just trying to please, like just doing whatever is required to make someone happy. 
I'm feeling empty inside. Feeling empty and then not even knowing what you need. I, I know sometimes that was me in the beginning and lots of women that I work with in the beginning, they're like, I don't even know what I need. Mm -hmm. Like, what would you say to a woman at that point where they're like, like we said, I know I need to look after myself, but I have been so disconnected from myself. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what I need anymore. Or I've become a mom or, you know, yeah. what do I, how do I know what I need? I would start by focusing on bringing some joyfulness into the journey. That mm, I love that. Like, I need fixing. I need the solution. Yes. I need it now. And no one needs fixing. It's no. unraveling. Mm. And I say, first of all, let's bring some playfulness. Yes. First of all, you know, embodiment practices of grounding and connecting with your heart and, you know, taking some breaths, being in your physical body, mm. that type of thing to really yes. bring your nervous system. And then I would say, you, I always say as the feelings all the, we live in this world and I find goals a really difficult word mm. I you always, are my soul sister yes. I really yes. struggle with goals oh, just, oh, just oh my god my because husband, oh my husband yes. used to try and goal set with me and oh. I would just I would lose it and he'd be like what is wrong with you you were okay and now you're really not okay I'm like I'm freaking I, out by this goal and it's so pressure. um it's so stagnant it's so yes. end goal it's yeah. so you know as I go back to this feminine energy we are fluid and things yes. change and when when we say goal also and we focus on something that we want to achieve we have never think about something that you have created and achieved in your life you've never followed the thing you follow the feeling. Yes, I love and that. So what we do is if we focus on feelings, how do mm. I want to feel you know, grounded, connected, heart-led, whatever feels right for you, that there are certain things in your life that can drop in if you're on that frequency, but yes. ego limits you to say what's possible and what's not. Yes. And things that you could never even imagined aren't able to come in if you're focusing on this particular goal yes but if you focus on this feeling you know who knows what could drop in yes and then you can actually tune into the journey and and that to me is where the joy the bliss the mm. you know all of that the learnings the it all comes in and that's the magic to me like if we're in this goal it's like oh we're not getting there we're not getting there we're really yes. in the ego and we're just kind of like oh that feels nice and oh that didn't feel so good or oh yeah I like that that yes. just makes my heart sing you know we're able to really enjoy and also not having this strict um list of what makes me feel good like some yes going to be this some days it's just smelling some essential oils or having extra time in bed yes letting it evolve oh, yes letting it evolve I I, I'll, I'm, I can't stop talking now just yes <laughs> I love it it's like those morning routines I had I remember I had one client she's like yeah I get but this time this time I do this and this and this I was like okay do you feel into any joy into this and she's like what do you mean? I was like, are you actually in it? And yes. she's like, no, I'm just doing it because I'm supposed to do it. And I was like, there you go. There you go. Yeah. And that's that embodiment piece. And I say this to women all the time. My morning routine and night ritual changes all the time because I'm tuning into how I feel. Yeah. You know? and, and also sometimes you don't know what you need. So yeah. the other day, and I had a big session, a big day with clients and it was a full moon. So I was feeling it. And I've got my little den in my room and I was in child's pose with with my head down, like on the edge of the room. So the door was open and my husband walked past. He's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I, I just don't know what to do with myself. And he's like, do, do you want me to just leave you be? I was like, yeah. And you know what? We're going to get times where we feel like that. And yeah. I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know what I need. Yeah. And let that be okay. <laughs> let that a hundred percent be okay. And Mm -hmm. I, I love that because w like you can't know until you've felt that, you know, I, so many times women say to me like, okay, I've got more awareness now and I can see this unfolding and this and this, but I just want to be over there. And I'm mm -hmm. like, 
I hear you, but that's that's the ego. You know, you don't need to be over there. You're right where you need to be right now, working through exactly what you need to be working through. And I believe that about every single person in every single moment. You know, if we can just embrace, this is where I am right now. Yeah. Can I accept that this is where I am right now? In my, in my body story or in my relationship or in my work, can I accept that this is where I am right now? And I know for me, the faster I can accept that this is where I am, the quicker I feel what I need to feel to then move forward. But if I'm trying to bypass that thing, I just go round and round and round and I keep coming back to it. And I have to do what you said. I have to sit in it and you know, sometimes your mind doesn't know, but it's like your body knew in that moment that you needed to get on the floor, that you needed to be closer to Mother Earth, you know, that you just needed to hang it over, sure. you know. A retreat and like, you know, wherever you are in life, it's about really creating that security of safety. Like yes. something me and my seven-year-old daughter say before we go to bed is, because these are the words that she needs to hear is, you're safe and you're loved. Yes. And she actually says it back to me. And those are words that I need to receive too. And, you know, in that moment of any moments that you're feeling, the big feels, I'm safe. Mm. And if you can really connect with that love within, Mm. which is always there, but gets tethered with beliefs and expectations and life. Yes. It's always there. It is. And, you got feel it. Oh, and so often I have to use those mantras as well, mm. that I'm safe, I'm safe, or I love you, or, you know, yeah, my best is enough. Like, you know, it, it, I feel I have to use those all the time. And, and I feel it's really interesting that you share that with your daughter. And I actually do it with my children, but haven't actually realized that that's what I'm doing and often like you said I'm saying to them also what my little girl needs to hear or needed to hear at those times and I think this is guiding me to that the second part of why I think women struggle to nurture themselves and it's this block to receiving Mm. I know I when I started this journey I didn't realize that I had I was struggling to receiving like there was you know my husband was trying to pour love into me and at times I was blocking it I was shielding it out of thinking I was protecting you know again it was a childhood mechanism um it doesn't feel safe it didn't feel safe to you and it yeah feel safe to many of you and um like growing up my mom was an alcoholic and Mm. it it was a really intense experience and being energetically able to pick people's energy up I I held it for everybody Mm. and I was the one that was the holder so it comes to having children and my goodness you really need to receive that help but I don't yes and that is something that you know what I am still working on yeah me too put my hand up this is something I have to always work on safe yeah and you know, even even from my husband receiving that, okay, mm. he's going to put the kids to bed, he's going to do this and that because I can't. And but that's okay. I'm and soothing myself. Yes. Actually, they're his children. Yes. And yep. he can do that. And it's yeah. not I have to really thank him. And No, yeah. But that's, that's his children as well. And Yeah. And I had the exact same thing. I had to, I was always the hyper independent, mm-hmm. um, you know, dangerously independent, really. Um, and, you know, thinking I had to do it all on my own, that, you know, I was always like you, the space holder. Um, I'm the middle child of five and I had to just always be okay. And, you know, not really that anyone said that to me, but I just felt it energetically from a young age. And then I just... Uh, Throughout my entire life, I just kept telling that oh, story. I'll take that one and carry That's that me. Through. I'm the one that's always okay. I'm the one that everyone comes to. I'm the rock. I'm, you know. But then, like, when I had children, I needed to receive. And it became very clear that I was struggling to receive. My husband was lost at that time in his life when I had my son. 
and and that's his words and um and so he couldn't fill me up he was struggling to just adjust to becoming a father so it, again it pushed me into that hyper masculine hyper independent i can do it all on my own um and it wasn't until um till he was probably 18 months that i really was like what am i doing I need to receive, I need help, and that's okay. That doesn't have to mean any of these stories about me. And I was actually just talking to a woman the other day about a client um, who's just had a second child, and it, the, all these stories are coming up that her other son shouldn't be watching any TV and she's a bad mum if he is. You know, her partner's FIFO, so she's on her own with these two I'm kids. That TV. I said to her, that's so why I said to her, I, said, I sent her photos of me when I went from one to two children and I said honestly my daughter was attached to me in a sling thing like nearly 24 7 because I needed my hands like in a carrier um my son did watch more tv especially in the first couple of weeks I had massive bags under my eyes I was not dressed at one o'clock I said all of this is normal and she was like, thank you so much for sending me these photos. I was like, well, I wanted you to know that they're not just words out of my mouth. No, this is normal. <laughs> I remember sitting on the kitchen floor. Like, yeah. what the F? Have what I is this? <laughs> this like, what, what? Why would anyone do this? This is crazy. Like, I and I, I said to her, this is when we go, where is our village? Where are our sisters? You know, because we don't have that anymore. We all live so separate. We don't even live near our families really anymore. Oh, and you know, like in, back in tribal times, and there will still be communities in certain yes. cultures where the child is not put down until the age of two. Obviously, they're sleeping yeah. and things, but it's passed from one person to the next. And can yeah. you know what that creates for the child as well? Yeah, for the child and the mother, you know, because we need to hold the child, yes, but we need to hold the mother to be able to hold the child, don't we? There's There's all of these layers. Um, and that's what I said to her. I said, full permission to say, this is, this is shit. This is really shit right now. I'm in the shit. Cause I said, I was too. I remember thinking, you know what? The dishes can wait. Like I'm going to ask a, a friend if she will cook me some dinner because, you know, and I remember I got to that place with my second and I just wished I'd got there earlier. Um, mm. you know, in, and the only way I built that safety, that it is okay for me to receive, and I still am doing this, is that I have to give my give myself permission to ask, yes. you know? And sometimes I have been rejected in that. And I think that's why women sometimes feel a little bit um, wounded. wounded, you know? Um, but I know the only way to heal it is to, is to go through it, is to feel that and then go through it. And the more I do it, the more I lean in, the more I feel what I need to feel, um, the easier it is for me to receive. And But it is a journey. It's a journey that I'm, like you, I'm continuously mm. unfolding and unraveling. And um, and I love what you said. Like I remember saying to my husband, this is a partnership. They are just as much your kids as they are mine, mm. you know, but a lot of us have got this old story that's been passed down from generations that the woman just nurtures the children and the man works well in this modern day that's not how it works most okay. yeah it you know most men and women work and mm. um and they have other interests outside of the family and that's okay and so then we both need to take responsibility of our children mm. and I remember saying that to my husband one day I said you know if something happened to me before I we did all this work three years ago I said to him I would be concerned about whether you could look after our children Mm. not because I don't believe you're capable because I haven't given you an opportunity because <laughs> I've been doing everything I haven't been receiving your help so and he agreed and I said so we're going to start doing this like a partnership we're going to take joint responsibility for our children um one key lesson in that for me was that I had to let him do it his way which was the hardest yeah, thing and that's good for the kids to experience yes, I mean is. but you know it's funny though because still you know my seven-year-old really feels into those roles and mm. she'll ask me something and I'll say well what did dad say I'm just in the middle of trying to send yes. a voice note to a client my door's closed <laughs> oh well dad said no and I said well there we go then and she goes well you're the boss <laughs> and I just 
you know I laughed out loud and I was like she still feels into those roles yes yeah so much and yeah. obviously now that has been passed down to her and that's something yes. that will be part of her journey yes and that is also a point I want to make here is sometimes I suppose we're going into parenting that we feel like we've got to be perfect oh yeah but they have chosen us they've mm. chosen the journey and they've chosen the lessons yes I agree and it's really important to release that need for to be perfect yes and well the truth is we can't be can we it's no, it's an know. it's an unattainable goal and yeah. I know for me growing up I had an idea that like a, a story in my head that my mom was perfect um, so then when I became a mum, I was trying to match that story. And I remember um, when I told my mum this and my mum was like, I'm definitely not perfect. And I remember having this moment of like, wow. <laughs> and it's that perception of a child because we have these perceptions as a child and then that yes. carries through the adulthood and how strong it is. And oh, so strong. I have these really open conversations because she's she is emotionally um, more advanced in yes. that okay my mom didn't have I didn't have that support network from a mom and I've had to learn these skills and yes telling her about well how do you know all this stuff and you know she asked me what I do for others and I said well I've learned it I've had to learn it and I've wanted to learn it and she's like oh you know and yes. I love that I love that I love that you because know? you're so right we can learn you know, like, I think that is a key thing that sometimes people use it as an excuse. Well, I didn't get that. So I can't give that as a parent or mm -hmm. I didn't see that modeled in my family life or in relationships. So then I can't do it. Like, you know, as if like our past determines our future. Mm -hmm. um, and rewire our brain. Like that's 100%. what I do with NLP. Like you yes. can't rewire it. A hundred percent. We can feel so powerless in it yes yes and in order to get that power back we need to do the work we need to learn we need to go deeper we need to ask those questions like the questions we've been bringing up today and 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 really go into that journey mm. so that we can learn more and be more and embody more and I really feel like that's the whole point of being here I know when my mum shared that she wasn't perfect she also shared um she said to me I am a work in progress and I always will be but I'm also my greatest masterpiece and I loved that and that was such a gift that she shared with me and I have continued to embody that for the for my life it's something I live by that I'm always going to be a work in progress there's always going to be more there's always going to be something to unlearn or relearn and I also sometimes when you're on this journey we can have this expectations that others should so an example of a client um at the weekend and she's living in New Zealand her mom's in the UK she wants her mom to come out to visit them she's got three children mom's scared she's really mm. scared of doing that journey and she's like well why can't she just get her shit together <laughs> and come over and I said because that fear to her is really real yes. and it was like she was able eventually after reframing it it was like bringing love and compassion for yes. her mom's stuff that her mom doesn't want to work on that fear and that that is a making of her belief system and what she's grown up with and yes you're starting to shift your consciousness and you're but for some people they don't want to and it isn't about actually you mm. it's about them and how we can attach to other people's way of being when it has nothing to do with us it's yes. just you know, that's how she was feeling. And that's a real mm. big fear for her. And she was like, ah, oh, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and I think like you touched on a really important thing, which is evident in all relationships. And it's like, we want them to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, and we can want that, but it doesn't mean we can have that, you know, unless that's what they want. We have no control over that. It's completely out of our control. So, you know, trying to make them think a certain way or tell them they should get their shit together, like it doesn't get us any closer to what we want ever. It really just creates a wedge and creates more separation. And I, I agree that 
you have to really just come back to love and compassion and meet them where they're at. Yeah. That's where you are. Yeah. And so, you know, you, and it's not sometimes so much about doing it for the other person, it's doing it for yourself. For you, yes. You completely drain yourself and mm. this is another topic when we attach to things about how you know we're attached to circumstances if they go a certain way or attached to the way someone speak to us or you know attached to anything we're we're constantly up down up down up down mm. and reactive to life whereas if we can I love the Buddhist concept it's called equanimity I think I'm saying it right but I use it a lot and it's they they are grounded in themselves that to say if something happens that's good that's bad who knows something else happens that's good that's bad who knows they're not attaching themselves to yes. what's happening that something good's happening oh, okay that you know that's great or something really shit's happening let me come back to ground myself before I'm going to have any interaction with that person or this situation come yes. back home Yes. But otherwise, energetically, it's exhausting. Yeah. Well, and in the realm of energy, there is no really good or bad. No. You know, it's it's the ego mind that labels it all. You know, it, it just is, isn't it? And when you ground back to yourself, it's like you can kind of zoom out or dive deep in, whichever way you want to look at it, and be like, that's just what it is. Yeah, and that, you know, and that's, you know, that's not going as far as talking about energies and energies and vibrations. And like I have a spirit guide next to me. I have two with actually opposing different energies. One of them, he's here, he's always so intense, where she is like, slow down, we, you know, take your time. Yes. And I know that now. And I know that, you know, I have to have conversations with him to say, look it's okay I'm gonna rest here like yes we're talking about our conscious mind and you know the reality we're living in now but that's not going into different energies and I'm not going to go down that route because yeah I feel like we need a whole podcast for that (laughs) that sounds amazing but oh this has just been amazing and honestly have I've felt so nurtured in it and um I I would love you to share a bit about your membership I'm going to put all the links below um Dominique has a beautiful membership I'm going to make sure I put all the links there but if you just before we wrap up just tell us a little bit about what you do within the membership and um yeah I'd love for you to share that okay darling thank you well I'm pretty much booked up one-on-one um so this is why I'm really in this space of this membership and the reason I created this membership is for women to dip their toes into what it, it's like to be held and supported that mm. it is about embodiment and it's about yes there's content there to teach you the tools to discover that inner balance but it's about the embodiment so you know each week is a self-love invite beautiful I don't love that anything, I don't say anything like that it's an invite that if your heart says yes and it's about embodiment you know whether that's how you talk to yourself that week or if that's having a mindful moment or and it's a beautiful way to keep your mind and body engaged Mm. in where you're at um the you know there's live meditations meditations are my thing and love meditation and what I'll, i'll i will put a link on to i'll give aston a link for i'd love to gift you a free month to the membership oh because if you're feeling in that space where you do want to be held then it can be overwhelming at first and Mm. if you want to test the waters to see if it it feels right to you but you know what I say to the women then there is it's about showing up exactly how you are Mm. and you can have those challenges you can have those wins whatever like it doesn't have to look a certain way and yes. it's it's just it is it's just about being held and seen yes. and isn't that everything just just being held you know no. you say just being held and seen it's everything it's everything it's everything. It's everything that I never had when I was younger yes it yeah. is everything and you know there's so much rawness and truth and 
God, behind the scenes of what was going on for women. And I'm blessed because mm. I can hear and share that journey yes. with them. But there is so much, so much more than what appears on the surface. 100%. I fully um, agree. I fully agree with that. And, and I get to see that with women and couples as well. There is always something underneath. There, oh. there always is. And we're just so distracted by the surface and the shiny things, you know, like all the stuff on the outside, but it's, it's literally a distraction. Yeah. I, that's how I feel. You know, the real work is that inner work and all that stuff that's going on underneath. And the biggest thing is creating that time and space to be held or supported in that. And that's what I do. That's what you do. I, I love that, that you were creating and carving space for this work, which is just so important. Mm so important not just for us but for our children and for our families it's and to also I just did a call recently yesterday and it was the joy like mm. when do we feel into the joy of life instead yes. of shoulds and musts and, and on this and this busy addiction I call yeah because it is addiction yeah um you know when do we feel like we are able to feel the the wind on our face mm. or a butterfly just beneath us or just the sound of birds you can hear the sound of birds all the time all the time I love but we that. don't tune into it and this is mm. the, this is why I use mindfulness so much is for us to be in our life and that rewires our mind I'm going off, off on a tangent this oh no it's all um, connected though I love that yeah you know, be in your life be in your life, be and, in your life and through the you know the the growth or the the unraveling having that awareness as soon as we bring awareness into it we're able to notice that inner chatter we're able to hold ourselves in a different way and mindfulness is everything because yes. we're able to see it yes definitely and then make a choice you know, and tune in, check in, what do I need? Yeah. And let myself receive it. Yeah, Can so I let myself receive it? Exactly. So what I'd say, the biggest thing for the women listening is ask your heart how you are and mm. what you need, what you need, what no one else, what mm. your heart needs to feel safe and nurtured and held. Beautiful. Oh, I love that. Well, I feel safe nurtured and held just from having this conversation so thank you yeah. so much beautiful i absolutely love this and um i'm going to put all dominique's links below and um thank you so much beautiful i'm sending you so much love <laughs>